So welcome to ISIS in the Bible, the spring gathering week number one. Can you feel the breeze? Why is the eye of the storm the most peaceful? The sun is shining through in complete stillness. Mother Nature is always pointing the way home. All roads lead to the point in the middle where pure love is. The question for the day is, how do you get centered? So glad you could join us here at the Energy Lighthouse and on Zoom. So we're going to go around the room and we're going to ask everybody, how do they get centered? And then Lovely's got a question for everybody that we're going to talk about. So we're going to go around the room. Perfect. So we'll start with Marion. How do you get centered? Um, hmm. Depending on what I'm doing uh, for my workout class, I'm a Pilates teacher. Um, warm up, stretch out, um, stand on one leg for a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, find the balance. Um, then you feel your center. Pull your tummy in. <laughs> And uh, try to remain calm when other people are flipping out and sort of separate a little bit and be more of a, 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 a watcher than a participator. Cool. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Kathy, how about you, Kathy? Hi, so I've just finished cream cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's got to be meditation for me, um, 10 minutes or more each morning. And then um, throughout the day, I'll just try and pause if I need to, uh, just stop for a couple of minutes. And I use um, Serenity Prayer. don't know if any of you have heard that one. And it's God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I might say that two or three times, and it reminds me that I'm powerless. And like um, Marion said, I might prefer to be an observer, a watcher from the sidelines, really, and getting in in there, in the ring with anyone or anything, unless absolutely necessary. And peace of mind is very important to me. So there's little things I can do to keep me balanced and um, take a personal inventory of the one I need to and see what's going on within and within a child. I go swimming twice a week and very fortunate the club's just down the road and they've got a heated outdoor pool. And I'm not a very good swimmer, but I just toodle up and down there doing lots of lengths. It's lovely. Um, so yeah, peace of mind of um, checking in with myself throughout the day. That's what I do. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Love thee. We'll go around, love thee with everything, and then we'll, you can ask your question when everybody's through. Yep, understood. Um, what do I do to get centered? The first thing that came to mind was go to bed and go to sleep. Um, and I think that basically is, is what I've done when I want to get centered. Coming into unity, though, has given me other avenues of, of being able to, to get myself centered. And I think basically I just say to myself, okay, you're going through this now um, and tomorrow's going to be a better day. And I guess that's why I go to sleep so that tomorrow will come quicker. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Love you. Jeffrey. I've done transcendental meditation since the early 90s. If I've ever been out of sorts. But over the last three years, or since 2019, the back end of 2019, uh, I've suffered more with anxiety. And I was given a little tip as uh, to breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth, but also to stand as if you're holding a tray with my palms up. And that seems to higher my vibration. Uh, I've done it in uh, quite a stressful uh uh, episode where I wasn't being allowed into a shop because I wouldn't wear uh, a thing going across my face uh, and the guy was arguing with me and I said you know like I'm exempt uh, I've got COPD so I don't need to wear one and he wanted me to prove it and that just uh, 
caused my anxiety to, to, to rise because I was trying to keep control of the anger. Uh, so you, you're fighting my normal, you know, like uh, to have a go. I was trying to be a better person. So I found that just standing there with my palms out, with my palms up as if I'm holding a tray. Uh, I just closed my eyes in the middle of a shopping centre outside the shop. <laughs> and yeah, I gathered my thoughts and gathered my, my it's one of the first times I've been in that situation. Uh, and it really did help. And so that's how I centre myself. But uh, I normally meditate as I go to sleep each night. I'll, I'll meditate for that last 10 minutes. I'll just... Uh, I'll just say my mantra and and I'll just slow everything down and yeah and and, and that's me uh, that's how I said to myself thank you very much thank you Jeffrey and thank you for being honest man really appreciate it so I know there's a lot of people out there that are going through things and they this is going to be something that we should probably do more often because when others can hear what everybody's doing to get through their day it's important so thank you very much jeffrey thank you okay uh, joan yeah i have a magnet mattress so i lay on the magnet mattress and close my eyes and deep breathe nice awesome that works for you huh perfect okay julie well i'm just learning so much um and, and reflecting on everyone's answers and I guess I do different things depending on my level of being off. <laughs> There's been times I just take a nap because I can't deal, but on a regular basis, I try, I set a timer on my phone for nine o'clock, three o'clock and six o'clock. And that timer reminds me to, to say that I'm loved and that I'm here to love. And I, I say that to myself until I believe it. And then I take a deep breath, but my breath, unlike Jeffrey's, is in my nose and out my nose. So my vagus nerve knows that I'm not um, in a state of threat, um, that everything's calm and I'm safe. Um, so that really helps me, um, but there's never anything wrong with a good yoga flow. I mean, <laughs> everything that everyone says, I totally resonate with. So I just love it. You know, I think it's just having a grab bag of what you can do at the moment. Maybe it's, you're in the middle of something like Jeffrey and you have to just put your hands up and let your meridians receive. I think that's when you put your hands out, your meridians are up and you're saying, I'm ready to, to get the information. I'm ready for the support. And, you know, isn't it just about asking? So, yeah, that's that's a long answer. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's OK. It's all right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Sammy? I don't really know what I do to center, center myself. I just kind of pray and kind of try to close my eyes and chill out and try to focus on whatever good part that I can think of, you know? I don't know. There, it's not really like a lot of stuff, honestly. It's just I try to focus on whatever the good part of whatever is. Which a lot of the time is really hard, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, we get it. It's 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 a, it's an adventure. It's a, it's a it's a constant thing for sure. Yep. Thanks, Sandy, for being honest. Okay, Mary Fran, if you want to jump in, I know you said you're just gonna observe today. Are you more than welcome to? Yeah, I do um, meditation. And just a reminder of myself that um, the Christ presence is always surrounding me. And then I've just recently learned of EFT, which is tapping on your body. You have, um, um, what is it, energy centers. And a lot of times we um, hold negative energy within our bodies. So the tapping helps to release that um, energy out of the body. So um that's kind of what i do awesome yeah i gotta learn more about that one 
I know I do tap on my one side here, which helps my stomach come out of a knot. But other than that, I got to learn more. Thank you. You're welcome. Lex? Um, what I basically do <laughs> is creating a bubble of uh, untouchability around me in my shadow work, in my crowd work, seeing how the world works. Um, the tapping I have been doing a lot. I've been doing the, um, which is uh, uh, created by a Dutch woman. I've been doing the, the Mer method, which, had, which, which has had a great effect on self-centering. Um, but in my daily being, I am creating a bubble around me to to uh, see what I see and not uh, and keep it inside. And um, that's sometimes a strange feeling because it's sometimes very frustrating because it makes you very lonely in a certain way. But I'm lucky enough. We have found uh, a Scorpio, <laughs> which has been a, a quite a challenge. Ching and but it is amazing what it is become now. My friend Nora, and uh, yeah, that's that's how I sent to create a bubble around me. Hey, gotcha. I can visualize that. Awesome. Thank you. I think I've got it. We got everybody in Zoom. We're going to come over now to Energy Lighthouse. Ernie? Hey, guys. Uh, that's a good question because I do a number of things to try to center myself. One of them actually starts at basically 6 o'clock in the morning with my dogs. So every morning I get up with my wife before she goes to work and I actually take the dogs for a walk around my property. Where I live is beautiful. I got water and I got trees and I got a beach. And, so I start my morning off every morning walking the dogs and just walking around the property and just enjoying what I have. So that centered me pretty much. And then later on, after the wife goes to work, sometimes I'll sit down and do meditation. And that's centered me. And then sometimes it's funny because you said, you get tired in the afternoon, and sometimes catching a nap will center me. <laughs> but I know I found myself a little bit uh, the other day, um, I had to bring my truck in for an oil change and walked into the business and a lot of people in there and just TV blaring and different hustle and bustle. And I just felt my heart picking up pace and you know I'm just in this situation I'm thinking here we go is this me or is it the whole situation being in there so I found myself going outside in the chair outside and just enjoying the sun and just started doing breathing and you said through your nose out your mouth out to your nose and that actually centered me again so depending on the time of the day and what the situation is there's different ways of centering ourselves right it could be breathing it could just be walking for walking my dogs in the morning. Another time could be meditation. Another time it could be a nap. So there's a lot of means of doing it. It doesn't have to be one specific one, but I know for myself, depending on what the situation is, I'll pull in different forms of centering myself. So thanks guys. Thank you, Ernie. Rob? I'm like her and I, uh, I use a lot of different techniques. Uh, one is I go into a four, 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 four box breathing, where I'll breathe in four, hold four, breathe out four, hold four. Um, if I'm at work and I'm in the middle of fixing some equipment and I have a lot of tense people around me, I'm, I just go into conversation as if I'm talking to a young child. And so the conversation goes, you're okay, it's okay. You're gonna figure this out, everything's okay. And so I'm just in that conversation to relax my body. Because my old way was, uh, you know, you got to get this, and where now I calm myself down. Um, and then the other way is um, just sitting outside with my shoes and socks off on the grass, grounding with the sun hitting me. Um, that one kind of energizes me. 
And then uh, the other one is if I'm having a harder time, um, I'm lucky enough to have people around here that, that are going to do energy work on me. So I'll have them, if I can't really center, I'll have them do some uh, energy work on me. Awesome. Awesome. I understand that environment inside the plant very well and how that can come on we're gonna get those cars out <laughs> so uh for me and, and thank you everyone because i know it's it's awesome to hear what everybody does because now every time you think about centering yourself you got some more thought starters right uh, for me i three 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 every day i do uh that the that one intention that i wrote i just rewrote it a little bit changed a couple words but just, just an intention that is a positive intention that helps center me. So I try to do that every day, three, three, three. And then um, I just have these feelings where I need to just go outside and I go outside and I just stare up at the sky and talk to whatever angels I want to talk to, talk with who's left the visible, knowing that they're still there and just feeling the sun, listening to the birds, whatever, even if it's in the winter time, doesn't matter. Just, just get out there and just look up to the sky and know that the sky is really the inside of me, right? Not the outside of me. And uh, and the other thing I do is 24 seven, just try to keep every positive, every action, every word, every image in, out, that is love. Because love is stillness, right? The center of the eye of the storm, that's just like the, underneath the magnet, that black hole, that's stillness, that's purity, that's pure inertia, that's the ether, it's pure love. So if we can keep that centered, action whatever you do towards love then it helps you stay centered all day so that's what i strive for anyway i strive for it. it's not easy so thank you everybody love the what's your question for today she asked the question yesterday i said this would be a good one for today so i've been noticing and talking with uh, first of all for myself um it's been a little while that i've noticed that i'm waking up anywhere usually between four and five o'clock when that happens, I'm usually awake until six and then I can go back to sleep until seven. But recently it's been backing up like since the 14th of April, it's been anywhere from two o'clock to four o'clock that I'm awake. And I asked some other friends of mine, are you having the same concern? And a number of people in the Ottawa area said yes. So then I was talking with a friend in Waterloo and I said, just out of curiosity, is this happening to you? And she said, yes. And I asked someone in New Brunswick. So last night I finally bit the bullet and I said, Claudio, is the world doing the same thing? And so the question is, Claudio, is the world doing the same thing and what's happening? Okay, so we got the world right here with us today. <laughs> anybody, is anybody experiencing that? I know me and my wife are. I've been feeling that like crazy lately, honestly, like, I've been waking up at like two in the morning and just been stuck till my caregiver gets here to get me up. And it's just like, I literally have just been dealing with that where like I'm getting up earlier and earlier and I can't really sleep very good. So I've been sleeping later into the afternoon and it's just, oh man, it's throwing everything off. <laughs> awesome. So that was, Kathy, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. And yeah, I've been waking up at four o'clock, going back to sleep about six, half six, six for weeks now. So, yeah. UK, so we got the West Coast, we got the East Coast, we got the UK. <laughs> it is always, is it, is it that time period between two and four or two and five, no matter where you are on the world? Right. Right? Yes. I don't have that. Um, I have sometimes um disturbances that i only sleep one and a half hour and uh, what i see it has to do with um vi uh, a kind of fire that wants to come out so it's different in my case uh, i only <laughs> come out to take a pee at night so that's that's all i am disturbed by well so we have we have uh, anomalies like Lex, but he doesn't sleep at all. So I guess that kind of counts. <laughs> Jeffrey? Yeah, I uh, sends everybody else really about four o'clock. Uh, and then I'll turn over and at least he's awake as well. So 
you know, like uh, we're not waking each other up. We just, but the sun's rising earlier now, so you know, like the birds are tweeting. So uh, summer's coming, spring's coming. So I just think it's just part of that. You know, we get the seasonal adjusting disorder at the back end of the year. Maybe we're now like like tuning into to the lighter nights because it's nine o'clock here now and it, and it's still light outside. So maybe we're just getting into our summer mode and we're getting more in tune with ourselves. I, I don't know, but yeah, I definitely loved it. Uh, awake for a, an hour in the morning and sometimes difficult to get back to sleep, but just meditation and off we go again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so so I love the, you can hear it's, it's, it's going to be, and it depends on the person too, but it's, it's happening all over the world. And I have this funny suspicion as we get closer to the fall, that we're going to feel more things, but it's all going to be good. All right. Anybody want to chip in? I just seen Angelica. Welcome, Angelica. You're more than welcome. If you want to say something, you can jump in. Hello. How are you? Hello. It's Angelica from Vancouver. I got the time mixed up and I'm a half an hour late. I'm sorry. And I, I missed the question that you were discussing. Uh, it seems like people around the world are waking up between two and four in the morning. And we just went around the room and many people are experiencing the same thing. How about your end? Well, I wake up between 2 and 4 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Do you? Sometimes. And I know that because I'm a holistic nutritionist and I study the organs and the times of the organs and the time that liver and lungs are rejuvenating is between 2 and 4 in the morning. So ask yourself what feelings of grief and anger might be needing to be processed. So meditation is a really good idea and it usually works to dive deeper and integrate and then go back to sleep. That's my experience. Awesome. Interesting. Thank you for that. I want to chip in on that, uh, if I can. Uh, sure. Well, you know, I, I think what uh, what you uh, pointed out with Mary Magdalene, she's making room in our organs for the mother to pour uh, new energy in. That's definitely what I experienced. Yeah. yeah. It, absolutely it's all tied in with the phoenix rising right don't forget the north node is still making its way to meet with with eris at zero point aries right the sun met and then this this fall that alignment happens which starts the whole new calendar because the sorrow cycle of 18.6 years times 30 is 558 and a new calendar starts so uh, our whole being is being retuned reset up so awesome thank you angelica so I'm just going to go through, I got a little bit, not a whole lot today, but a few things are going to go over today. So what's happening in the sky? It's going to, on May the 19th, Juno, that's Mary Magdalene, right? By all stretches of the imagination, she's uh, Nephthys, right? Juno, Mary Magdalene, Nephthys on the Egyptian walls. She aligns with royal stars Aldebaran and across with Antares. So she aligns on these royal stars. Anytime the two Marys, any one of the two Marys has an alignment like this, you, there's something to just keep an eye on because it's huge energies. Also, Icarus, that's the boy who is getting his wings tested. So I, I know even myself, my wings are being tested. So that Icarus is the story of uh, the boy who gets his wings, flies too close to the sun and comes crashing down right so it's in retrograde so anything that you're doing that is uh materialistic like and uh if you get a sign where you can't do that know that that's it's a sign and being aligned on the same time so this alignment happens at the same time as juno aka mary magdalene the earth and mother aligns with those two royal stars antares and scorpio and aldebaran in taurus so those are the the Scorpio has sex with the Taurus, and that's why you have babies, right? So Hygieia is the goddess of cleanses. They're lining up. So cleansing people, giving them timeouts. It's in Capricorn. One foot in the water, one foot on the land is important. Okay. So in other words, keeping one foot in the material world, helping others while you keep one foot in the spiritual world. 
It's not good to keep both feet in the material. And it's not good to keep both feet in the spiritual because we're supposed to be helping others. So that's what Capricorn brings. So at the same time, exact same time as the alignment, the moon is entering Taurus. The sun is in Taurus. Juno's in Taurus aligned with the royal star. This, and that's Taurus is the home of Mary Magdalene, the bull. So then a couple of few, on, later on that day, we have a new moon in Taurus. So it's a special alignment, very special alignment that's happening. And in, as far as Capricorn, Capricorn is the knees. So if Icarus, Hygieia is putting you on your knees, in other words, making you uh, go into a personal lockdown for whatever reason to recharge. Remember, these are cleanses to get us to recharge. So if we have to take a nap, if we have to sleep for a week, so be it. Don't worry about the material world. It's really, really important. Because for people that are getting knocked on their butt for weeks at a time, those people I know are both feet in the material and they're being shown that they need to start putting one foot in the spiritual waters. Time to wake. So here's just another depiction of that exact alignment. Things that Juno causes. She is involved with volcanic eruptions. We can't predict them yet, but when we go back and look, you can see that she's always at play, right? She causes shingles and skin eruptions. That'll put you down, right? People say, well, I got shingles because of stress. No, you're getting shingles and you're feeling the stress because you need to cleanse. You need to sit still. It's a sign. And then Juno is also related to hurricanes and tornadoes. We're going to show you a little fact. Here's a quick clip of how Juno is involved with the 2021 hurricane season. Notice her retrograde back and forth motion over Antares and opposite Aldebaran. June 1st, the hurricane season starts. And then on July the 7th, Hurricane Elsa makes landfall in Florida. Notice the alignment. And then on August the 29th, Category 4 Hurricane Ida makes landfall in Louisiana. Notice the exact alignment with Juno and Antares. And then on September 14th, Hurricane Nicholas makes landfall in Texas. So you can see that she, that actual, that was one of the, I'm going to open this up. So she actually went by the first time Hurricane C started. She came by the second time, boom, right? And that, that, that was uh, Hurricane Elsa. She came back around, bang, exact alignment for the third time. And we got the category for Ida. And then she went on. So in 2021, that exact retrograde stopped like on its track. It's like ran you over and went back over, like without backing up too far. It was right on in the line. And you can see that it says overall, the 2021 hurricane season was above average in terms of the number of storms and their intensity, highlighting the need for individuals and communities to be prepared for these types of natural disasters. Well, we can be much better prepared if we know what causes them. Well, we know what causes them, it's her. But she's given us a sign that when she goes retrograde exactly over top, say, hey guys, it's me. So whoever did the story of the Wizard of Oz with the two Marys, the Black Mary is the one that comes every 558 years. And then the White Mary, right, Glenda, the White Witch, She's the one that caused a tornado in the Wizard of Oz. So somebody is probably like we the way we're feeling. I got nobody I can tell this to. So he put it in a movie so we can put the pieces together to remember. So Juno represents us. It represents us not being centered. So if we're not centered, then we're going to get signs. So if the hurricanes are stronger, means a whole lot more of us aren't centered. So the reflection of the weather on the outside is a reflection of our weather on the inside. So the more we can stay centered, the better off we're going to be. So then we induce others and everybody's being induced anyway, and we're going to have some beautiful weather, but we're going to go through some changes. So there's some truth for you. 
You guys all heard of the Stations of the Cross. We touched on them in one of the other uh, meetings we've had. But has anybody figured out what the truth of the Stations of the Cross is? So we're going to do a series of Stations of the Cross uh, over the next few weeks and uh, prove to you what the true meaning is, the deep inner standing of how it affects your life on the wheel of infinite lives. Thanks to Roddy Sue, she left a message. Hey, go check out the Gnostic Academy. He did a great job of interpreting which apostle, a post, you know, a post. The one of the stations of the cross is a post. Station of the cross is a disc, disc ipo, one of the the cusp between zodiac signs. Those are the crosses. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So this brother's done a marvelous job. And it's with divine timing because we're creating the proof of the calendar of the stations of the cross. So this is going to come in really handy to explore the breadcrumbs that the Bible has. The stars already have the answers, but the proof that the Bible is written about in the stars will bring the nations together as one nation. So I made another little quick video that I want you to look at. And, and please pay attention. It's only two minutes. So I'm going to show you the stations of the cross and how they happen in the sky. Let's show you how the Stations of the Cross are a calendar of events that happen in the stars, specifically the Mother Mary and you. We will start with the Phoenix Rising of 209 BC when we fell from the Aryan Age into the Piscean Age. Remember the 558 year cycle. This starts our new Stations of the Cross with the Aries or Arise Station of the Cross. A new calendar starts. Moving forward, Mary was with us for 114 years in Aries, our head, our conscious mind cleansing us and bringing us to the Taurus station of the cross in 95 BC. Note the alignment of Eris and the sun as shown with the astrology software. Mary was with us for 51 years in Taurus. What does Taurus station represent? Left for another video. After 51 years, we hit the Gemini station of the cross in 44 BC. Again, note the alignment of Eris and the sun. Was there anything notable in the, in the misinterpreted history during this time? There sure was. The non-literal figure Julius Caesar engraved on the Egyptian walls was presumably born around 100 BC and has been recorded dying in 44 BC, exactly on the Station of the Cross of Gemini. Oh, and by the way, there is silver coins preserving this event or Taurus transit between the Stations of the Cross with Julius Caesar and a bull. There's a lot of art and history with Julius and a bull. So history is being rewritten and being truthfully exposed by the cycle of the stars and the Phoenix rising we are upon, aka revelation, of the new calendar starting from the true 558 year Easter. So all the non-literal messages left on the Egyptian walls people have taken literally because Julius Caesar is not a literal, literal being. But man puts himself in positions and he aligns himself with the stars and then he tells people that they're the king, they're the queen, they're the ruler, they're the controller. So it's time for us to just like, just laugh and just move on in our way, stay centered and go about our life, right? And uh, don't idle anybody else. So that's what's happening. So we're gonna do a series of, of, uh, of stations of the cross and events through history and how We've taken those stories that are written in rock about your life on the wheel and literalized them with misinterpretations. So the stations of the cross are when the mother meets you, 12 different stations. So we just left the station of the cross, Aries, well, we're on it right now, we really are. So for the next 114 years, mama's going to be in our head and she's going to cleanse us, right? The cleansings will continue until the morale improves, right? Until we all become loving. So that's what the message is. Just a quick couple notes, and then we're going to go around the room. So the when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. Right? So we got we to gotta jump on this with love. Okay, in the Bible, Luke 12, 15. Keep your eyes open and guard against every sort of covetousness. Covet covetousness <laughs> because even when a person has an abundance in his life does not result from the things he possesses proverbs 16 26 the soul of the hard worker has worked hard for him but greed is dangerous and destructive 
it is desire out of control. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. So things are changing, folks. Things are changing and we need to stay centered 24-7. And the more we are, the more we're never we're going to be always in that eye of the hurricane. So, and that's all I have for today.